Welcome back to Leading Questions. I'm Kayla Tewin. I'm Megan Ma. And I'm Julia Sidorenko, and we're lawyers at Weirfolds. If you're joining us for the first time, Leading Questions is a web series where you ask and we answer everyday topical legal questions, and we're going to keep it short and sweet for you. The recent pandemic has got a lot of people asking questions about the status of their jobs and their rights as employees. So this episode features four associates at We're Folds, Leah Boritz, Ashley Flaherty, Caitlin Steven, and our co-host Megan Ma, who all practice employment law and who are here to answer pandemic-inspired employment-related questions. So without further ado, let's get to the episode. First question for today is for Ashling. We often hear about packages being given to employees when they're terminated. So is somebody entitled to a package if they get terminated because of COVID? So the first thing that uh, someone needs to think about in terms of whether or not they're entitled to a package is the, how they were terminated. And by that, I mean, were you terminated without cause, meaning that no reason was given, or were you terminated for cause, um, your employer saying that you've done something reprehensible and the employment contract has therefore been frustrated. So when you've been terminated for cause, which um, is pretty high bar in Ontario, it means that the employer doesn't have to pay you anything other than your wages up to the date of termination. So there would be no package in that circumstance. However, most terminations, at least in my experience, are done on a without cause basis, in which case some type of termination notice or payment would have to be provided. And the way that you determine what type of package you are entitled to after a without cause termination is to first look at your employment agreement. That's very important. Okay, but what about if somebody doesn't have an employment agreement or they can't find it? So, well, if you don't have an employment agreement and you can't find it, those are two different things, obviously. And if you do have one and you remember signing one, I would absolutely um, recommend that you get your hands on a copy of that. And the best way to do that would be probably to ask your employer because it, it, more likely than not, they have retained a copy of the employment agreement. Um, if you don't have an employment agreement, then a different type of termination provision would apply to you than presumably one included in your employment agreement. And what that means is there's two very different ways of determining what notice entitlement an employee is entitled to after they are terminated without cause. And that is there are minimum standards set out under the employment standards legislation, which vary from either zero uh, weeks of notice if you have been employed for three months or less, or all the way up to eight weeks of notice, which is the maximum. The other way of determining uh, notice entitlements under, uh, sorry, uh, notice entitlements would be to what is called common law notice. And that is a uh, term of art that um, allows uh, employees to have their notice entitlements determined based on factors such as age, how long they've worked for an employer, and the level of responsibility they had in their role. And Common law notice is generally much, much more generous to an employee than uh, ESA notice, which is what uh, the sort of zero to eight weeks was that I described before. And common law notice, is it applies when you either don't have an employment agreement or the employment agreement that you do have does not specifically, and I'm talking very specific language that the Court of Appeal keeps fighting about, limit you to ESA minimum statutory requirements. Okay, so Ashley, before you go on, we often hear this term severance. What is severance? So severance is uh, definitely a term that a lot of people know from TV or movies and that sort of thing, and they often get confused about, uh, especially in Canada. So severance is something distinct um, and separate from a notice entitlement. And notice is uh, the number of weeks that you are entitled uh, to have notice that your employment will be terminated or pay in lieu of that notice. Severance is separately calculated and it only applies when you have been employed by an employer for at least five years and that employer has a payroll of at least 
2.5 million. So if those um, two criteria apply to you, then you are also eligible for what is known as statutory severance. And this is only um, an this is only applicable when we're dealing with the ESA minimum severance or sorry termination notice that I was talking about before. If you're entitled to common law notice, severance is essentially rolled into uh, the amount uh, that you could be determined to be owed uh, for common law notice. So it's important to know too that the pandemic hasn't affected in any way what notice entitlements you would be an employer would be required to give you um, on termination. So as long as you have been terminated without cause and you have been employed for at least three months, which is the the probationary period set out under the legislation, then you are entitled to some type of notice of your termination or pay in lieu of that notice. And you're also entitled to any outstanding wages that you are owed, including accrued vacation pay up to the date of termination. Um, it's important to know that an employer, however, isn't required to pay you out for the notice amount. They are required to pay out severance. But for notice, it can be working notice. So they could say to you, okay, your last day will be you know, in three months or in three weeks, depending on the amount of time uh, that is stipulated either under your contract or in the um, employment standards legislation. So it, 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 it could be a payment or it could be working notice. It has to be noticed for the same period of time, though. Got it. Thank you for that answer. Um, this next question is for Caitlin. Uh, what should I do if I come down with symptoms of COVID? Do I have to tell my employer? So first thing, you <laughs> should look to the public health guidelines to see what the experts are saying. The current public health guidelines say that if you are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, that you should get tested and self-isolate for 14 days. You shouldn't be going to work during that time. You shouldn't really be leaving your home other than to get tested and then make sure that you're not uh, adding to any sort of spread of COVID-19 in your environment. Okay, but can my employer fire me is, or is my job protected? Well, I can't guarantee that your employer is going to actually comply with the law, but provided that they do, um, the law does give you some protective and reinstatement rights. Um, you have job protected leave under the Employment Standards Act. There may be some Human Rights Act components there. And there are reinstatement rights if you're fired. There's also the termination notice that would apply that Ashley just went through in pretty good detail that they'd have to consider depending on the circumstances. Okay, great. Um, will other people at work find out that I got sick though? So, in short, your employer has to or may need to inform other employees that you may have been in contact with, that they may have been exposed to COVID-19. So the circumstances over whether the employer has to say any information will obviously depend on the circumstances. If you're working from home and you haven't been in contact with anyone, then there may be no need for the employer to go around and spread any information at all. Um, whereas if you've been in an office or you've been at a work site or something and you've been around other people, um, then the employer has to take reasonable precautions to help prevent the spread of COVID-19, especially if it's found or suggested that you actually got COVID-19 in the workplace. Um, if that's the case, there might be some reporting obligations that are triggered. So, for example, there might be a requirement that your employer report to Public Health Ontario to let them know what's going on. But all of this information is also covered by some privacy legislation and employers have to be very careful about your private information and how that information is communicated. So generally, an employer has to get consent before disclosing personal information. And that personal information includes a medical diagnosis or condition. So the fact that you've been diagnosed with COVID-19 is identifying, it tells something about you and it's personal information. And so the employer has to be very careful when disclosing that or disclosing any information that could be traced back to you. Uh, generally, um, and ideally, the employer would send a general, a general message 
saying that these are the precautions that your employer, your uh, fellow colleagues have to take, um, without actually saying, Julia has COVID-19, you need to tell me if you've been near her, or something like that. For the record, I don't have COVID. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Caitlin, that was super helpful. Um, next question is for Leah. CURB, CERB, I don't know how you pronounce that acronym, but the Canada or Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit. What is it and does, do I qualify for it? So CERB or CURB or however you want to pronounce it is um, it's a taxable benefit uh, or taxable payments of $2,000 per, per month for up to four months to Canadians who have lost income or lost their jobs or been laid off because of COVID-19. Um, so there's actually two ways you can get it. There's, it's $2,000 a month if you are due, if you are getting the benefit through CERB or it is um, $1,000 every two weeks if you're getting the benefit through employment insurance. Also last week, um, and, but it's for the same amount of time. So your total benefit would be $8,000 over the course of four months. Um, however, last week, the government announced that CERB will be extended by two more months, meaning that um, you'll, the maximum benefit you could receive under the, the program is $12,000 rather than $8,000. Um, in order to be eligible for, for CERB, you have to have stopped working due to COVID-19, or you're eligible for regular EI or sickness benefits or you have exhausted your regular EI benefits between December 29th and October 29th, 2019 and October 3rd, 2020. So two questions. When you say last week, you mean mid-June? When I say last week, I mean mid-June, yeah. Okay, okay good. Uh, second question then. So you were just going through eligibility requirements. So just to be clear, are you eligible if any one of those three things that you mentioned applies? Yes, you're eligible if any one of those apply. And um, also, if you pick up jobs, um, if you are picking up some small jobs per month, you're also eligible for CERB if you earn $1,000 um, or less in employment or self-employment income during the four-week period. So you can still continue to get the $2,000 benefit per month as long as you're not making more than $1,000 per month. Um, there could, we never know what's going to happen. There could end up being changes. So I would just recommend um, sticking with the news or checking the government website for further details to, to see if there's any changes that happen um, as we get through this. Or they could give you Sorry? A, or people could or, give you a <laughs> Yeah, you can give me a call and I'll tell you too. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for that, Leah. This next question is from Megan. Do I qualify for a wage subsidy? Yeah, so over the last few months, we've seen a bit of an alphabet soup of all these government assistance programs. So to clarify, the CEWS is the wage subsidy program that the federal government has put into place, and it's provided to employers and is not directly provided to employees. So you may be able, be able to receive it, but it'll be funneled through your employer. CEWS, got it, another acronym. Right, another acronym to be aware of. Um, so basically what CWS is, is it's a subsidy of 75% of employee wages for up to 24 weeks. And that can be retroactive from March 15th, 2020, all the way up to August 29th, 2020 that we know of so far. And really the goal of CWS is to enable businesses to rehire workers that were previously laid off because of COVID-19 and to prevent further job losses in the future. Awesome. Uh, can every employer apply for this? So you'll have to check the eligibility requirements to see if your employer is eligible. But generally, they're eligible if they have had a 30% reduction in revenue compared to the same month in 2019, or as compared to an average of January and February 2020. Um, it's also important to note that if you've been laid off, you may still be eligible for CEWS as long as your employer rehires you and is giving you kind of retroactive pay and you, you meet the eligibility requirements um, under the claim period. Um, it's also important to note that if you are rehired and you become eligible for CEWS, you may have to pay back some of those CERB benefits that you've received in the meantime. Okay, great. Thanks for all your answers, ladies. That brings us to the end of this episode and thanks everyone for joining us. If you have any questions for us, 
that you'd like us to address in a future episode, as always, you can email us at leadingquestions at weirfolds.com. See you next time. Thank you.